just this, this morning that I found out that I've spent like 23.41% of my life on Drupal.org. So that's like 13, 13 years and seven months that I spent, that I've been there. Started from Drupal 4 and 5, 6, 7, and then 8 now. Um, today, we are going to look at uh, Drupal 8 bug offs, a hitchhiker's guide to less popular symphony components. <clears throat> Sorry. Now, uh, we all do not buy one, get one free. We all love, we all love a bagging, right? But uh, we all know that um, actually you are paying for two or three items when you buy one and get one free. So, but uh, anyway, that's all we had to talk about. Uh, well, my good friend, A. Anonymous, said there's nothing like a free lunch, even in the open source world. So when you say you get something free, that's usually a price to pay. And um, he also said, all vanilla Drupal installations are equal, but some are more equal than others. What does that mean? So that means there is a slight difference between the symphony com 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 components that you get when you use Composer Create Project and when you just download a tabo from Drupal.org. You've got some smaller components that get pulled in when you use Composer. And that you can easily ver verify with Composer Show. Now, uh, all the components, symphony components in, in blue, come with the, when you get with the tarbo. However, Composer Create Project actually pulls in the ones in green. And um, most of what I'm going to talk about today are the ones that Composer pulls in. Okay, yes. Now, I've sort of looked at all these less unknown comp components and I've classified them into four groups. Very simple, it's there, just do it. It's there, you need to use it, that's what that means. It's there, do your own thing. And is there nothing stops you? Now, the first one. Is there, just do it. Uh, I believe um, some of us use something like this. Uh, some people say X debug is the only thing. But uh, Vidom is there, DPM, we use Skint, we use DSM, we use Print R. However, that var dumper component allows you to call your dump. You don't need to do anything at all. Just like you do DPM, you use var dump, you use print R. All you have to do is just uh, call dump. And then you get something like this. Okay? So let me just exit now. I hope this works. Yeah, can we see it? Yeah, yeah, it's just a little. I've got a super cool site here. Yeah, you can see it there. It sits there ni nicely. You can collapse everything. You've got the language, object there, you've got the array there. It's super handy. I find it useful. And you don't have to do anything at all. Just call dump. It's, it's there. You just have to use it. Okay. Now, before I go to the next one, let me quickly do something here. And let me check out this. Uh, I've got a branch here for the next. Okay, cool. Right. So, let me now refresh this sign. Uh, what happened? What just happened? Anyway, we all, we all prob probably have seen that message a number of times. So I just go back. And that's what 
the next component is all about. Is there? You don't have to do anything special except just use it. That's a Symfony debug component. How, how is that going to help me now? I just need to add the following two lines at the top of my settings.php and then let's see what happens. <clears throat> I, hope, I hope it works. So that's my settings.php. I've added those lines there before. So I just do that. Uh, let's see whether that's going to help me now. Ah, that's better. That's better. It tells me a lot of things. And before going to the solution to that problem, you can see the you can see how the request is handled. You can see index.php is handled, and then where the magic is happening in um, the symphony. That's the handle method. Where is handle handle method? It's not there. I, I can find it. However, when it gets to the point of connection to the database, it says that's 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 a problem. Access denied for user. You can see, and that's there. So. Let me see where the problem is. I think I know. <laughs> so it's a, um, now all I have to do is that I've got some DMC. Amsterdam. Yeah. And I know my something. Close your eyes while I type my pass password. <laughs> I think that should do it now. DC Amsterdam, DC Amsterdam. Ah, we are happy again, yeah? <laughs> awesome, awesome. Good. So, nothing else needs to be done. Let me just switch back to my old... Because I need the others. Okay, that's better. That's better. So we can see how that small change allows us to um, have more information about errors, about things in our code. Next is this one, um, the finder, the finder component. Um, it's there. You have to do your own thing. Um, it's, not, it's not that... Um, used a lot in core or in uh, whether it's the console, um, the Drupal console project and all sorts of things. However, I find it useful when dealing with files. Um, uh, let me just... Uh, you see? Um, I would like to get zip files from a certain directory. And that folder is nested, and I just want to do that, right? So this code works, right? It works, but then look at the yeah, look at the code. I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for all the files, and with no files in Git, we can either be the folder or the file. So we check whether it's a directory. Then we recast back to get the zip files, and again and again. Then we do path info, and then <clears throat> to check. For the extension, and then we get our data. What about this one? That's what the finder uh, component allows us to do. It's an abstraction. It's, it's, of course, it's uh, an ob um, object-oriented uh, uh, abstraction of all the functionality we saw <clears throat> earlier on. But you can see, you can fit up by the name. You can fit up by size. You can say I want to I want to get files of between this size and that size. Um, you can do all sorts of things, right? And then um, the output is just the same. I don't know which one you prefer. I know the one I prefer. Uh, and the output is, is exactly the same. So if I go to my site, I think I've got it. 
Yeah, you can see that. Let me just turn that. Uh, let me just turn that the belt off. Uh, let me just turn that off. I've just done something. I shouldn't be uh, really there. Okay, that's better. So that's the one, and exactly the same thing you can do. You can see with uh, with my with my finder. But when it comes to code, the one that is easier to understand, of course, I know the one that I choose. Okay. Now, is there? Nothing stops you. Now, uh, with this dot env comp component, there are two things that I would like to mention before coming to this uh, to this one. First of all, Drupal core includes a dot env example, right? So it allows you to store credentials in a dot env file. However, as as documentation says, you need to call getEnv to get the variable you set in the .env file. Uh, you don't need to do anything else apart from copy this .env example to .env, and then you can then use getEnv to get the credentials. Um, however, I read somewhere that getEnv is not that safe, it's not uh, performant, I don't know what that means. Um, however, um, this, this um, dot .f example in Drupal core is managed by uh, another um, component, is vlookers php .env. And that was what the Symfony guys took, they made it more object oriented, and we can do um, other things, different things with that uh, with that component. So what that allows us to do is something like this. Let me just show you before I demo that. What that will allow you to do. <coughs> but however, before you can use that, you need to install it, and you deal with the composer require symphony that pulls in the component for you. So, in your settings.php, you can, you can uh, after creating the .env object, you can now load the .env, the, the .env file, right? However, however, if you follow the Drupal recommendation of just copying the .env example to .env in the same place, you don't need to. You don't need this. You don't need that. That line, dot env load, is done automatically for for you. And to make it easier, you can also namespace your um, your variables there. Okay. So let me show you how that one looks like. What that one looks like, and there's something. So I've got my I've got my super cool app here. Uh, I namespace it DCA. Uh, DCA IJ, these are the uh, these are the credentials that I need, right? And to make it work with with the with the um, with the settings uh, object in uh, Drupal, and I do something like this here. Uh, I can just uh, similar to what we saw early, uh, earlier on. On this slide, right? So it's exact. It's exactly the same thing. So um, I'm just I'm just uh, reading my uh, DC underscore var variables and I'm removing it uh, so I can so I can then uh, set the set the value in the settings array. So what that means is that when I want to use that. Uh, in any in any place, it works just like any other settings. Then, because loaded automatically for you, you don't have to call getEnv again. You don't have to do any of that uh, by yourself, right? 
it comes, you can just do your settings normally. So you can see it's there like that. Uh, settings get at your DPI user, and then you can do <coughs> that. And we can see it here. I think I made, ah, I think that's what that one is called. Yeah, so that's from my .m file. It's not accessible from the web and that kind of thing, and that's what .m files are used for. There are other uses for the .m file. Um, now, all these components that were documented um, on the Symfony website. So if you go there, just type in components, you know, and uh, you get all, this, all the different options. You can have different .m files for different environments. Uh, and then to get automatically uh, loaded for you, depending on the depending on where you are at. Yes. <clears throat> so where are we? Yeah. So just a quick cap is that just do it. You don't have to do anything, and you have to use it. You can just use the use X Y Z, and then. And then, um, if it's there, you can use it as you like, like the finder com com component, or something that is there out, out there in the wild. It doesn't have to be a symphony component at all, right? Or maybe you like um, uh, how uh, date time is uh, is being uh, handled by the uh, carbon um, project. You just do your composer re require carbon, and then you use it. So. There is, there's, there's another, there's another um, uh, thing that you can do. For, uh, now, the Drupal console project leverages the Symfony component from, um, from uh, uh, the Symfony project. And there are, some, there are some gems, little gems, in all these packages that are not, that are not being uh, used at all that you can use to do something like this. So let me just do, let me just something like this quickly. I think my time is nearly up. Uh, but let me quickly do this. Now there is no content here, right? Um, you can write you can write um, a Drupal console uh, command to generate nodes for you, right? And then. Um, Sometimes you would like to get um, a visual representation to show where you are at. Um, I worked on a project that had to handle like um, that, that was pushing pushing ten like ten thousand files, tens of thousands of files to um, to S3. There was no way we could know, right? Whether it's successful or not, we just crossed our fingers, you know. However. Something like this. Uh, let me just. Uh, I've got this. Oh, I hope I remember this uh, command. Uh, let me just. Let me just. Let me. Let me, let me quickly show the command. Uh, ah, DNC. Okay, that's the alias. Triple DNC. Look. It's telling us how many nodes have been created. Um, and then it tells us done. So that is the progress bar, the progress bar class in uh, that's part of the uh, Symphony console um, component. <laughs> and the code is simple. It's, of course, you need to create the command yourself, right? And then in that, in that command, first of all, you need the progress bar class, right? And then you create, you initialize it, and then you s customize the output. And then, oh, the bar is open. Now you can now start your process, right? As many as you, as many as you like. At the bottom of the of the loop, you advance the progress bar. By default, it's just one. For instance, if we've got um, chunks, chunks of items to then. That it makes sense if it's chunks of 10, then you can then advance 10, right? So that you can 10 items, so you can go like that. And then you can track the, the 
uh, the progress and then progress by finish. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I think we are finished, right? Yeah? Or not? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let, oh, let's, let me just show the. Uh, 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 we can see our thousand, thousand, thousand nodes there, right? So they were created for, for us nicely. Yeah. So, if we recap then. Yeah, <laughs> my friend Anonymous says, says that what happens in Amsterdam stays in Amsterdam. But uh, he added something else, right? What happened? Shouldn't stay in Amsterdam. So, what I was trying to say is that where there's one little thing that you've learned over this couple of days, it'd be good to take it back with you. I hope one of those little gems will be something from this session. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bishop, tomorrow. And please uh, take the survey. Yeah. Thank you very much.